Hello there. Welcome to Science for Juniors with me SRK and my lab assistant Binny. Binny, you don't have to be a spoiled kid all the time. Oh, sorry sir. I really like blowing horns when I'm very happy. Okay. So what makes you so happy? Oh, from tomorrow I will not need to come to the lab by bus. My dad has agreed that his car will drop and pick me up. I'm so excited. You know, no more fight for a seat in the bus etc. Yeah, but I think you should stick to the bus. But why so? Car is so much comfortable. The excessive use of automobiles increase the pollution in our environment and we all know that the air pollution around us is increasing every day. But then the bus also pollutes the environment. Yes, but if many people will collectively travel by one bus leaving behind their individual vehicles, it will reduce the pollution to a great extent. Is pollution really very harmful? Ah, why don't you find out yourself? Let's go to the virtual world for that. In this module you will learn about the air pollution. Air is a mixture of several gases present in varying proportions. These gases seldom do us any harm. Among all these gases, it is oxygen which is most important and critical for our survival. Air may also contain some toxic substances which deteriorate the quality of air we breathe in. These pollutants are released into the air mainly as automobile exhaust and industrial emissions. When air in environment is laden with high level of toxic substances, it is said to be polluted. The toxic substances which pollute or contaminate the air are called pollutants. Air pollutants could be solid suspended particles or gaseous in nature. The solid pollutants include suspended particulate matter such as dust, smoke, asbestos, carbon, soap particles and metallic particles like lead. Gaseous air pollutants may include toxic gases like carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, methane, butane, benzene and a few other organic and inorganic gases. Let us learn about each of these air pollutants in detail. We will first learn about gaseous pollutants. Carbon monoxide is an odorless and a colorless gas. It is produced as a result of incomplete combustion of carbon containing fuels, mainly fossil fuels such as petrol, diesel, coal, wood etc. Sulfur dioxide is an odorless gas at a low concentration. It is produced as a result of burning of sulfur containing fossil fuels like crude oil or coal. Oxides of nitrogen, mainly nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide are produced as a result of incomplete combustion of fossil fuels like coal and petrol. These toxic gases are released to the air mainly from automobile exhaust and industrial emissions. Let us learn about organic gaseous pollutants like unburned hydrocarbons. Unburnt hydrocarbons are produced by poorly tuned automobile engines or idling vehicles. When engines idle or are poorly tuned, the hydrocarbons present in the fuel does not burn completely and escape into the atmosphere as toxic unburnt hydrocarbons. Methane is another odorless and colorless organic gas. It is released as bacterial activity from decaying vegetable and animal waste and garbage buried in the land fields. <gasps> oh my God! There are so many gases that pollute the air around us. Yes, and you can easily see that a lot of this pollution is basically caused by automobiles. Mm. <gasps> Not again! I also blow it when I'm very sad. That's why my mom throws it away whenever I get it. Wise woman she is. But sir, so what if the air is polluted? I mean, does it do any harm to us? Why should we bother? Oh yes, Binny. Pollution has a very hazardous effect on us. 
Let's take a detailed look at this. Now that we have learned about air pollutants, let us now learn about the adverse effects that these pollutants have on us. Carbon monoxide, when inhaled, binds to the hemoglobin in the blood and forms a compound called carboxyhemoglobin. This compound severely hampers the transport of oxygen by blood to the various body parts. Low concentration of carbon monoxide in blood can result in dizziness, headache and fatigue. High concentration, however, is fatal and may lead to death. Sulfur dioxide is a stinking gas which causes irritation to the eyes and affects the lungs causing respiratory problems. At significantly higher concentration, it causes bronchitis and inflammation of the lungs. Nitrogen oxides are mainly responsible for smog and acid rain. Smog causes breathing difficulties, particularly for asthmatics, coughing in children and other <coughs> illnesses of the respiratory tract. <coughs> acid rain not only poses health threats but also damages buildings and harms vegetation. Lead is another highly toxic particulate pollutant which can accumulate in the body through breathing or accidental consumption. This can cause lead poisoning resulting in loss of appetite, nausea or convulsions. High concentration can damage the brain, liver, kidneys and the central nervous system. Back to the real world. Why that sorry face? Nothing. I was thinking, should I not use my dad's car then? <laughs> I was so excited about it. I think there is a way out. What sir? I think you can do a carpool. That way, you will do less harm to the environment. Good idea! I should call Dolly, Simi and others right now. Uh, can I use your phone? No! Now is the time to see how we can minimize the air pollution. So let's go to the virtual world now. Air pollution is chiefly caused by the exhaust gases from vehicles like cars, buses, scooters, bikes and trucks. Air pollution is also caused by the smoke from the chimneys of factories and by burning leaves and rubber products. Air pollution can be minimized by encouraging carpooling and using public transports like buses and local trains. To keep the air clean, leaves and rubber products should not be burnt. Also, more number of plants should be grown. Hmm, that was long and now I feel tired. Whew. Professor, can I take a break and relax in the sun for a while? Sun? Being in sun for long durations may cause skin cancer. And again, we have pollution to blame it for. Oh, what are you talking about, sir? Cancer because of exposure to sun. How is that possible? And what does pollution have to do with it? Ah, come, I will let you know. Do you know that there is a layer of ozone gas that surrounds the earth? This ozone layer absorbs harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun, thus preventing them from reaching the earth. But due to pollution and some harmful chemicals, this ozone layer is getting destroyed. And thus, sun's harmful ultraviolet rays reach the earth. Yes, an exposure to these ultraviolet rays cause sunburns and even skin cancers. Sir, from sunburn I remember Alan Donald. He used to wear a white paint on his face. Yes, Binny. The South African pace bowler Alan Donald, or White Lightning as he is called, used to wear war paint on his face. It is not an attempt at camouflage but simply an effort to gain protection from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Sir, I'm scared of going out in the sun now. How can I protect myself from these rays? Should I stop going in the sun? Ah, that is the part you are really going to like. There are creams and lotions that protect skin from UV rays. You must put them on before you go out in the sun. 
And yes, a good pair of sunglasses will protect your eyes. Now is the time to take a memory jog. So let's just quickly revise what all we have learned today about air pollution. Pay attention. Air is a mixture of several gases. Air gets polluted when toxic substances enter into the air from automobile exhaust or industrial emissions. The toxic substances which pollute or contaminate the air are called air pollutants, which could be solid or gaseous in nature. Air pollution has harmful effects on both the living and the non-living. Ah, sunglasses! Yes, to protect my eyes from the UV rays. I'm impressed. You are learning quickly, but make sure that your sunglasses are 100% UV protected. Alright, time for me to go now, friends. But you keep exploring the world of science and I will see you again.